hello everybody. Here we are again with a new video, you know, from the Dutch guy with the bad English accent. Um, this time with a comparison video between the Free Sky Horse and the Jetty model DS16. Um, I know it's like comparing apples to oranges, but uh, on the internet there's a lot of comparing going on. Or at least people shouting this one is better, or people shouting this one is better, or this one sucks, or this one sucks, or whatever. Um, a lot of these people don't actually use and own both systems. So uh, I am one of the people who does. Um, so I think it's fair to make a bit of a comparison video. Um, so you can all conclude for yourself which one is the better one for you. Because I don't think it's one on one comparable. But um, we will see. Well we open them up. Here for the DS16. And here for the Free Sky Horse. Well, what's inside? Of course, um, the horse itself. Um, it comes with a um, nice neck strap, really nice quality. Um, and FreeSky delivers an external antenna with it. Uh, of course, there are also antennas inside, but you can use an external antenna if you want. And uh, they del deliver one with, uh, with this, the set. And then, of course, there is a charger. And um, I know I think it's the keys for the for the case, and the DS16 I think is almost the same, but they deliver it with uh, a nice microfiber cloth to uh, wipe the screen. Of course, uh, the DS16 itself. I um, I used some brackets on it. I don't like the one point, uh, uh, you know, hanging around my neck. I want uh, two points. Uh, for it to be balanced perfectly and then of course there is also a charger unit and the neck strap you know the free sky neck strap is from great quality but this one is even better it's great quality and they deliver um, a nice foam pad so if you want to change model settings in the field and you don't want to lay your transmitter down into the wet grass then you can lay this on the ground and your transmitter on top of it so it won't get uh, wet okay so that's uh, for what's in the cases uh, when you buy the DS16 there's also a um, EX9 um, receiver with it so uh, if you are going to compare prices you have to um, um, subtract the uh, price of the EX9 uh, receiver from the total package you get a receiver with it. I don't have it in the case because it's in my uh, my plane somewhere. So um, that's for what's in the cases. I think the uh, quality of the insides is just all the same. It's just foam. It's all loose in the case, but uh, it, it works. It's fine. It's no uh, no big deal. I have to say, by the way, the horse. It also has um, one hanging point, so you can hang it uh, around your neck. But I don't like uh, the one point hanging around my neck as I said uh, with the DS16 so I also have the brackets for this horse but I still have to uh, to uh, get them attached to the horse because this is actually my second horse a brand new one um, long story but uh, it's my second one it's brand new and I have to uh, attach the brackets to it so also this one two brackets possible you have to buy them separately the same for the Jetty DS16 brackets you have to buy them separately Okay, uh, then the transmitters itself, how is it in your hands, what's the weight, all that kind of stuff. Um, first the Free Sky Horse, if you hold it in your hands it's, it feels really sturdy, it's a bit heavy. Um, but switches are laid out nicely. With your um, pointing fingers you have some sliders. There are also two extra sliders on the front. Uh, the display is nice, um, uh, it's a really nice layout, the display on top of the transmitter. Um, it holds very sturdy. It's it has some rubber grips, which um, yeah feel actually pretty nice. Um, it feels like a really quality radio. It's a bit bulky into the hands, but you know it's um, it feels great. Um, and then the DS16. It's um, a bit smaller than the F X12S Horus, but it also has a really nice feel in the hands. It's a bit colder, by the way, because it's all um, aluminum here. 
It's all uh, metal, so it feels really a bit colder than the horse on your hands. Uh, this is not a rubber, it's some kind of, yeah, I don't know what it is, it's some kind of plastic in the grips, but it feels really nice and it feels like high quality. Um, also here the switches are layered nicely, I think it's, you know, uh, the two brands uh, looked uh, at each other. Um, I even think, no, they don't have exactly the same names. But, you know, um, it's, it's actually pretty much the same. Here are two sliders on the side. It's um, the layout of these sliders. I think I like the layout of the sliders on the horse a bit more. Um, and I'm missing, of course, two uh, linear sliders uh, in comparison to the, the horse. Um, but, you know, that's not a really big deal. I think it's both pretty good. If I have had to choose, then the horse is a bit better in the hands. Um, they're both pretty heavy. I will weigh them. Uh, yeah, okay. I think if, you, if I hold them next to each other... Yeah, uh, they're, <laughs> they're both, both pretty good. But um, I think I like the feel of the horse a bit better. You know, the rubbery feel. It's a bit more non-slippy, but um, this one feels like more quality. So, I will uh, weigh the radios now, so that you can decide uh, on the weight of it. Well, I have my skill, uh, skill here. Uh, I hope you can see the numbers on the video, and otherwise I will tell you. Um, I will put on the DS16. And it has a weight of 1342 grams. So 1.3 kilos is a bit heavy, but also the horse is heavy, we will see. The horse weighs, weighs um, 1,328 grams, so <laughs> they're pretty much the same in weight. But I have to attach the brackets here, so I think, I think the horse and uh, the S16 are actually exactly the same weight um, if I put on the brackets on the horse. So about... 1.3, 1.4 kilos. So it's they're both pretty heavy transmitters. Okay, that's for for the weight. Okay, I laid them down flat again. Um, as you hopefully can see on the video, the horse has a lit has a little angle in it when it's laying down on the on the on the table. So I like the angle of it laying down. So when you're pro programming the radio, it's just a bit more easy to look on the display than the uh, DS16. This one has no angle to it, it's just laying flat. And this one has a bit of an angle because of the hand rest here. Okay, you know, it's uh, minor, but um, it's a little difference. Um, that about uh, looks and feels. Um, functions in uh, inputs are pretty much the same. Uh, the horse has a bit more, it has two sliders more, it has a six position knob more and it has a little joystick over here which you can assign to uh, you, whatever you want um, on the insides for what about controls this one has accelerometers uh, working perfectly uh, the horus also has the accelerometers but um, with the current open tx software on it they're not available for use yet but i think it will be in the in the future uh, this one is also a built-in GPS. I don't know uh, why you want that, but it, uh, it's inside and it's not inside in the DS16. But, you know, also a little difference. Um, overall look and feel. If I like the feel of this one a bit better in my hands, but it's very personal, of course. But um, the looks of this one are, yeah, I think everybody agrees. This one is just the better one, the better looking one. Nice carbon front, all alum aluminum. It feels really like a quality radio. So um, if you choose on looks, go for this one. If you choose on um, how it feels in your hands, um, I, 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 I would choose this one, but it's very personal. I think um, I think this one is actually, uh, you know, it's the same. No, I, I can't choose between it. It's it's just the same. Okay, then uh, the gimbals, they are both equipped with Hall Sensor um, aluminum CNC gimbals. Uh, they feel pretty, pretty, pretty smooth, pretty good. Nothing to say about that. 
Also the same for the jury. Well actually I think this one feels better. Yeah I know it for sure. This one is absolutely better uh, for the feels of the gimbals. This one uh, is again it's very personal but this one is uh, actually feeling a bit better. I don't know what it is. It's a bit smoother and less hard. Yeah I think this one is a uh, better feeling. Yeah. Uh, little difference but I think this one is the better one um, switches also the switches these ones feel and sound a bit more expensive better <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it on the video yeah this one is feeling a bit more cheap I don't know if it's Real or not, but uh, these switches feel a bit more cheap than the Jetty ones. Also, there's less play on the switches. Yeah, actually, these ones are pretty loose. I think there's also little play, but a lot less than on the Free Sky switches. So, yeah, uh, on switches, this one is uh, the better one. Uh, pots, these ones are um, with a rattle. Both ones, I think. Yeah, both ones are with a rattle. These are smooth. No center detent. This is also this one is also smooth, but it has a center detent. And this is a six position knob uh, for flight modes or something like that. And these are linear sliders, also with a center detent. Both both of them. Okay. Then for what about trim layout? Yeah, I think the layout of the trims over here is not uh, really great, but it's better than these ones. I don't know, I can't uh, get used to this. You have to um, get your fingers uh, an awful end from your stick if you want to trim something. I think Jetty will say you have to use the auto trim function, also on this one available by the way. But I don't like the trim position. It's doable but you know, uh, you, can, you get used to it. But this one, although not perfect, this one is better for position of trims. Yeah. Okay, then um, I will turn them on. I don't know who designed this, but there's a really, you know, like uh, launched a nuclear missile uh, protector on it. I don't know why it is, but uh, it's a bit of stupid. But the knob is um, under it, so if you have to push it for a while. And then it will boot up. I use OpenTX on the system. Um, I like op OpenTX. Of course, um, when you buy this one, it's uh, equipped with FreeSky's own operating system. I can't tell you anything about that because I don't use it. Uh, I use OpenTX, it's really great on this radio. You, you see a nice colorful screen. I don't know if you can see it on the, on the camera, but it's really, really nice. Um, in real life, in sunlight, no problem read, reading this one. It's just perfect. It's a really great screen for, uh, for a transmitter. Okay, then I power up the jetty. Thermal. Okay, um, this one is a bit faster in booting up. Um, it also has a really nice screen, but it's black and white and it uses, I think, a bit old LCD uh, technology because it's a bit slow. If I scroll uh, through the menus, I see a bit of a ghosting, so it's a bit of a slow LCD display. Uh, but it's also very good readable in sunlight and uh, no problems over there. It hasn't uh, got any colors, then you have to get the DS or DC24, but that's a mo lot more expensive. So <laughs> to buy that one just for the color screen, uh, I wouldn't do it. This one is also perfectly readable. Um, if I choose ba purely on the screens, again uh, the horse will win because it has a perfectly readable color, color display. And this one is also great, but it hasn't color, so okay, <laughs> the Horus wins it. Not really a decision point, but uh, you know, it's a difference. Um, I may, maybe you heard it, but um, both systems when booting up, uh, they play a sound. Uh, the sound quality of the Jetty is really awesome. Sound quality of Horus also is really great. I can turn up the volume a bit more. Cruise mode, thermal mode, cruise mode. Really great. And speed. Normal. Thermal. Normal. Speed. 
also really great sound quality. You can add your own sounds it's, uh, on both systems, it's not a problem. Uh, both are uh, really good, so uh, nothing to complain about sound. Maybe yeah, the horse had a, has a little buzz in it. Um, almost not hearable, but if you keep it to your ear or, it's, or when it's very um, silent in the room, you can hear a little buzz. It's from the horse. I will check now if the DS16 also has that buzz. <laughs> no, it's dead silent. This one is actually the better one on sound. Absolutely no interference on the speaker. So uh, this one is better designed on uh, the sound system because that buzzing is a bit of... Uh, it's not nice if it's very quiet in the room. So this is absolutely silent. So on sound, <laughs> this one wins. Well, we now looked at them um, for the looks and feels, gimbals, switches, um, cases. Um, I think it's time now to look inside to see how um, how these things are built and designed. I am not really, um, I, I don't have really technical knowledge about uh, the insides of transmitters. I do have a bit, but um, I hoped that uh, Bruce from RC Model Reviews would do a technical reviews on the, a review on the horse, but I missed it or he, does, he didn't do it yet. So I will uh, look at the insides and uh, compare them to the DS16 insides. So uh, we will see. Okay, we will start by opening up the DS16. You will need a Torx 8 uh, driver. It's actually in the case, but I use my own uh, screwdrivers. So I will undo all the screws on the back plate and then the back plate will come off. It's really nice engineered, it's uh, all aluminum. So um, we will unscrew them and we will see what's inside. Okay, I removed all the screws from the DS16 and its back plate will just come off then. Um, then the Horus, you will need to remove, I think, uh, six screws. These ones, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. And if you open them up just with a regular uh, screwdriver, then I think it should open. So I will uh, check it and open up the transmitters. Um, before I do that, you don't have to open the horse to adjust the gimbal uh, spring tension. There are some little plugs here. You can pull them out and then you can go uh, with a hex wrench uh, adjust the gimbal tension, the spring tension, so you don't have to open it up to do that. So um, we will see uh, what's inside next. Okay, um, this one is really easy, this one isn't. You can pop it out when you um, remove all the screws, but there are things connected, so you have to be very, very careful to not pop this open. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there are lots of wires connected to the back plate so this is not so easy to open up so I will unplug some things and uh, we will go along show it to you in the video there it is okay both of the systems are open as I showed you uh, this one is not uh, just remove the back and it's finished but we have a lot of trouble to deal with um, I'm not going to totally open this one up because I have to disconnect some micro FL connectors, the uh, UFL connectors. Um, and I know from this kind of connectors if you um, disconnect them then you can reconnect them a couple of times and then they're uh, just broken. So I won't do that with my uh, Horus. Um, I leave it like this and I will get the camera and give you a look inside uh, right away. Well, um, the jetty one, <laughs> just open up the back plate and ready. Uh, this one, it really wins if it comes to <laughs> opening up the radio. It's almost undoable with the Free Sky one. Um, I will get the camera and give you a um, closer look. Well, here's the DS16. It looks really organized. Um, I don't see a lot of wires. It's really, really, really clean done. Um, if you look at all the connections, everything is soldered on, so it's really solid. Uh, we see a lithium battery pack. Um, that's important because the horse has something else. I will show you that in a moment. 
Uh, everything looks really clean inside. Also the gimbals really nicely designed. It's, it's absolutely a piece of art. If you move it, everything. There are no wires stretched or th something like that. Everything super smooth and um, yeah, this won't fill you. I see um, one extra connection point over there. Oh, excuse me. One extra connection point there and over there. Uh, it's for connecting some stick switches and uh, that kind of stuff. So it's really uh, nicely designed. All switches all soldered on. So no loose wires every, uh, anywhere. If, I don't know if you can see it. There are lots of antenna wires over here. Um, the DS16 has two RF modules built inside. So and every RF module has two antennas. So there are four antennas on the DS16. So this RF system is really uh, amazing. Uh, then we go to the uh, Free Sky Horse. If we take a look inside, it's a bit more messy than the DS16. Uh, what do we see here? Here's one of the UFL connectors uh, that I won't disconnect. It goes to, I think it's the GPS module. A um, bit of a weird place for a GPS module. Oh, excuse me. Um, it's behind the display, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it locks real quick and what the accuracy will be because the position is not very good. But okay, it's connected with a UFL connector. I won't disconnect it now. You have to disconnect it to get the back totally off. Um, the same story for the UFL connector over there. It will go to the external antenna port. So um, I will not disconnect this one. It's now connected really tight with some uh, glue on it. So um, I will leave it this way. Um, I will not um, wreck my radio just for a video. Um, what else do we see here? This has to be uh, the internal RF module. Uh, the Frisco Horus has one. Um, it goes to um, the internal antenna. It goes through here and then the internal antenna is placed over here. There is another antenna on the side, but this is actually uh, an antenna for the Bluetooth module. Um, I don't see uh, a use for the Bluetooth module yet, but okay, there's a Bluetooth one in it. Um, but that me this means that the internal RF module has only one antenna here placed right above the display. Um, and the external antenna connector will go to the outside of the horse so you can connect an external antenna and you can actually use them both both at the same time so then you have one mo module with two antennas the same as the DS16 one module with two antennas but this one has actually an extra module with two antennas so two modules four antennas and here one module one antenna but if you want one module two antennas so it is possible and if you want the same as the DS16, you have to add an extra external module to get an extra RF module with one antenna. So it is not exactly the same, but you can achieve almost the same as the DS16 with the Horus, but then you have to buy an extra external module. Okay, then the gimbals, they look, you know, it's, is it metal? Yeah, oh, excuse me for the video. It is actually metal, so it is um, CNC metal. They don't look as beautiful as um, the DS60 ones, but they're they're looking pretty good and they are feeling pretty good. Uh, all hole sensors. There is one thing you can see the wires moving while moving the gimbals. So I don't know. Maybe this will um, end up in a wire break. Uh, when you're using this one for a very long time, Jetty has done a better job. They are actually almost not moving wires, only there, but they have solved it really, really well. Yeah, okay. So for the insides, the horse does look a bit more messy and it's really hard to open it up. Um, then the battery, you can see it on the bottom over there. It's a nickel metal hydride battery, where the uh, DS16 has a lithium battery. Well, uh, it doesn't really matter. Horse um, is usable for about 8 hours 
with a full charge and I think the DS16 is about the same um, but the DS16 has a built-in charge circuit for uh, lithium that is uh, a bit quicker to charge so if you need to recharge your transmitter the, the, the jetty is really quick and the horse will take about uh, 14 hours or something like that to get a full charge so that's also a big difference so the winner on the insides it doesn't come as a surprise but the jetty one is absolutely a winner on the insides okay i will close it up right now because i don't like this being stretched while i am closing up my horse there are some things to say about opening up this radio um, there is actually no reason for opening up the Horus because everything is accessible from the outside you know the gimbal spring tensions are accessible um, the micro SD card is accessible from the outside oh, I can show it to you here, there it is the SD so um, there is no reason to open it up except for when you want to change the battery or uh, when you want to change the stick mode of the radio then you have to go in it and it's not funny to open up this thing so so please don't do it only if it's really necessary uh, the ds16 you have to open it up to uh, access your sd card or access your gimbal spring tensions so um, i think there's a good reason why jetty decided to um, make opening up this radio so easy so again Jetty DS16 is the absolute winner of opening up the radio. This one is actually not doable if you don't want to, um, uh, to get the UFL connectors uh, broken. But it's closed again and um, I hope it still works. Welcome to actually it does. Okay. Okay, both uh, radios are closed up again. Um, a little comparison. Um, this one is opening up very easy, this one is almost unable to open by yourself if you don't want to, um, to crack your radio. Um, so Jetty is the absolute winner. And then on the technical side inside, everything is really well sorted out on the DS16. Uh, really nice aluminum gimbals, everything soldered on, where FreeSky uses a lot of connectors and moving wires in the gimbals. So if um, I have to choose one on the inside techniques, then yes, I will have to choose the DS16 over the Free Sky Horse because it's just more uh, well thought of. Um, on the technical side, this one has two RF modules uh, inside with two antennas on each RF module. This one has um, one uh, RF module inside with a normal one antenna on the uh, RF module but you can connect a second one to the external port here then you have one RF module with two antennas um, so if you want to come close to the uh, jetty RF system you have to put an extra module in the back I will uh, get one to show you again here is one this is an external uh, FreeSky XJT uh, module you can put it in the back like this it's not so very hard to do now i have two rf modules with in total three antennas so that's the closest i can get to the ds16 this one again has two rf modules with four antennas so whatever you do this one will win on uh, the rf side okay um that's for about uh, the indoor test for the indoor comparison I um, so the next step is to take them outside and uh, do some range testing I know it is not one on one comparable but maybe um, we can get some da data out and um, you know you can use it to conclude for yourself which one is better okay um, on to the next step <laughs>